Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCola. He is Joseph Smith. How, how you doing, doing, brother? You all right? Very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. You're looking well with your well. coffee. <laughs> We're here to talk about how Eric Ten Hag has improved Manchester United's players. Ain't that right, Joe? Yeah, because there seemed to be a lot of criticism under previous managers, especially Ole by the end, where it was like, he's got them playing in a system or he's got them playing with confidence, but he hasn't actually improved them as players. And I think that's something that Ten Hag has clearly done already. He's getting the best out of people. I think there was an immediate improvement yeah. with Ole. And like you saw an improvement in some players, like mm -hmm. Marshall and Rashford and... You'd expect him to have an influence on the forwards, wouldn't you? Yeah. But overall, there wasn't a huge improvement. And if anything, we declined, especially mm. defensively. We were massively, massively declining defensively. And for him to come in, and like, let's start at the back. Yeah. When you look at David De Gea, yeah. how much has his improvement impacted the defensive improvement? Or is it what's in front of him? I think, it, I think it, they sort of go hand in hand. <clears throat> and we'll talk about the fullbacks in a minute. But I think both things are kind of <clears throat> linking together. David Hay is someone that I still really think can't be a top, top level like ball playing goalkeeper or a commanding goalkeeper because he's, he, he's got too far to go in terms of where he normally was. But he's definitely improved at that. Like I think starting from the Everton game in particular, some of his first time passing like crisp to feet passing, looking more confident, looking like... Um, he knew his role a little bit better. There was less pressure on him. Because if you think back earlier in the season, the Brentford game was a disaster, wasn't it? Giving the ball away, mm. giving it to Ericsson when really Ericsson dropped short so he could play it over the top of him. And then you, we came back after the break um, and it was Liverpool and all of a sudden just everything went long. It's like Ten Hag's kind of gone, right, just kick it long for now and we'll work behind the scenes to try and improve. And I think the last three or four weeks in particular, we've definitely seen an improvement in De Gea's sort I of I definitely game. saw... A better, a more improvement with his passes to the fullbacks. Yeah, because those were the ones where hitting them out. You for go, oh my god! Time. You know yeah. what I mean? Or he, he hits them head high, and yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're running out of space to yeah. kind of keep him in. And you're thinking, come on, David. But the, the thing about that frustrates it with, for me is I feel United have coached that out of him mm. because when he was at Let's Go and when he came through, he was yeah. very good with his feet. His passing was really good. Yeah, and now it kind of he played for Moyes, Mourinho, Van Aal, all these different managers. That gets coached out of you. Yeah. They they weren't ever trying to pass out. I remember a game against Manchester City, and I think it was Phil Jones at the back with someone else. It might have been Smalling, but I can't remember. And we were trying to pass out from the back against Man City. Mm. And we'd have De Gea in the six-yard box taking a goal kick, and Jones right next to him picking the ball up off him. Yeah. And it was we'd never get going. I saw glimpses of that with Harry Maguire back in the team, you know, mm. when Lissandro would give him the ball. But what Ten Hag has said that I agreed with is it's not just the improvement that David De Gea has made, mm -hmm. it's the positions others are taking yeah. um, taking up on the pitch that helps him be able to make those quicker decisions. We've got a quote here from, from Ten Hag, and he says, um, he says, on the feet for me, he has capabilities as well, talking about David De Gea. Uh, he says, this season, he's progressing from game to game in that part. It's not only to do with the keeper, like you said, but it has to do with the one in front. How do you give the keeper options to bring passes in? Because when they don't bring freedom or they're in the wrong positions, he doesn't have the options to pass around. But I'm convinced he can do it, and I think he's proven that in the game so far. I think he will improve from game to game in that part. And it's such subtle differences. Mm -hmm. You know, De Gea passing the ball out, a split second earlier than putting my foot on it and having a look. That yeah. makes such a difference. Even little things like Casemiro, being able to receive the ball under pressure. Mm. Um, did you see the other day where, for the goal that Rashford scored the header, Ericsson kind of receives the, the ball from and then gives it to Bruno and receives it. Most of the time, other players, like, you know, just having yeah. quality players in certain positions, yeah. just Casemiro... Such a difference. Yeah. Just someone that knows how to play that role. And Ten Hag as well, like instructing each player where to stand when the goalkeeper's got the ball, how to make space for yourself, how to make dummy runs. That Did you thing. notice when Maguire was struggling with mm -hmm. the ball at his feet? Because I thought he was very good aerially and defensively in the second half. So I don't want to, you know, lean on him too much. But you know when he was struggling, did you notice Casemiro dropped yeah. in between him and was kind of just like... Pushed him out of the it was way interesting, a bit. Yeah, I think that's, that's what you need. That's, a, that's what a good defensive midfielder does. And that's the thing. It's not just De Gea that's improved. It's the other players around him, which is making him look better. Yeah, for sure. Rashford's another one that's yeah. had huge improvements. I've always been on the Rashford train and I've always been confident that he'll turn it around. Mm -hmm. But I was worried. And there were, there's been a lot of criticism of him over the last 12 months. 
maybe longer than that. How happy are you to see these performances from him? He's smiling, he's mm. playing, he's scoring goals. It he just, looks happy. It just feels like the actual Marcus Rashford is back. Mm. Well, whoever that was playing last season, he's got Marcus now. Rashford MP. Marcus Rashford MP. <laughs> didn't have his boots with him. He's playing in his brogues. But like, it's back to being like, you are a proper footballer again. And I think, what was it? Five goals he got all season last year. He's got seven already <laughs> this season. There's obviously an improvement in not just like, I'll talk about his heading in a second, but not just that, it's his movement, his willingness and his confidence in beating a man, knocking it past a player, sprinting, getting on the other side of it. There was one the other day where he knocked it down the touchline and ran round sort of almost off the pitch like Gareth Bale in the, uh, in the cup final for Real Madrid, like off the pitch round and still beat his man. Where I feel like last season he didn't have the confidence in his body or in his pace or something to even try those things. So not just is there a technical <laughs> improvement, which we'll talk about now, but there's also a sort of mental and, and confidence improvement. There's well, also such a... It was such a mess yeah. at United last season. It must be hard for, you know, when Ten Hag comes in and everything settles down and training's good again and players can feel an improvement. It must be so much easier than when you've got a caretaker manager who's going mental. Yeah. You've got, you know, just sat the manager. You've got fans going against the owners, which long may it continue. I don't think that impacts performance, but I'm just kind of yeah, adding these different support. layers. Yeah. And you've got all these different layers going on. He's getting shit for what he does off the pitch, even though it's really positive. It must be so hard. And now everyone is literally just focused mm. on football. And now he can score headers as well. Mate. Which has just come out of nowhere. Ten Hag was saying, uh, if you score 100 goals for Man United before you're 25, you are elite. But it's about trophies to win with your club. And I think he can develop even more. Two headers. We've worked on that a lot. We had to improve. And you see what's happening. He's much more consistent and resilient. Already a great player, but room for improvement. Where will it end with his career? Who knows? I'm sure he will be great. How great do you think Rashford can be? Marcus Rashford will break Wayne Rooney's record. Really? Was He's 150 250? goals off. 54 goals off, being the number one goal scorer for Manchester United. He's on 100 right now. Mm. I've consistently said this. I feel like I'm watching him break the record. Mm. And if he stays until he's 35, 10 years, it's doable, right? Yeah. 15 goals a year on average. Let's say he has some really, you know, a handful of really good years where he gets 30 plus, 30-ish. It's doable, you know? It is doable. <laughs> He's got, to, he's got to hit that consistency every year now, though, hasn't he? He's got to be hitting 20-plus for... Because, really, he's probably yeah. not going to be getting 15-plus when he's 35. So it's got to be 20-plus for ten for five, six years, seven years, hasn't it? I think he needs a few big seasons in there. Yeah. Like, a few really big... You remember Rooney had that... It was like a 30... Uh, f almost 40-goal yeah, season. Yeah, 34. When he was the main man up top and that. Mm -hmm. Him and Tony V. Mm. Um, yeah, he's going to need... But I think he does it. I love that. Rashford does it. Absolutely love that. 154 to go, Marcus. Come on, lad. What about fullbacks? Fullbacks. You know what? Luke Shaw, I'm used to this guy just turning up when <laughs> someone's there for his. He's like, You want my job? <laughs> Fuck it, I better get act up. Yeah. Um, but Diogo de Lowe was massive. Remember when Mourinho came in and we got excited about Because, mm -hmm. you know, we, ha we hear all the things about the low. He's highly rated, he's highly thought of. And then kind of Mourinho, Mourinho leaves, and it's all this kind of. He gets lost in the mix. Yeah. We're working on that player that he was. Yeah. We've improved him so much defensively. Mm -hmm. Like, there was, a, there was a header with... Antonio? Was it Antonio? Yeah. And I was like, you don't win. I don't think you win that a month ago. No. Do you know what I mean? And just, and again, back to what Ten Hag is doing. I was chatting about this with my dad the other day, but how much more solid we are at the back posts. And, and we, we can give that to Shaw and Dallow, and obviously it, their confidence and they are improving and that helps. But also having the wingers drop back and being willing to do that defensive work now means that you've got a winger on their winger, the fullback is in a bit of space behind that. The centre back doesn't have to be as far out. The, the other centre back doesn't. The, the other mm. fullback doesn't. So now there's not this massive gaping hole at the back post. Yeah, how many now times did we more see players in the box? Maguire get dragged out of position? So Luke Shaw Maguire comes to cover him, yep. and then someone scores on the back post. Yeah, we see now, that regularly. Now you've got Anthony defending uh, in front of Dallow, so Dallow can drop back, and they can all drop back a bit, cover that goal line much better. So now it's a one-on-one -on -one header with you know Antonio and Dallow rather than. Dallow's here, Antonio's three yards behind And him, everything feels like it. a unit. We used to have, it used to feel very, there's the front four, here's yeah. our defence. Yeah. Just get the ball to them, lads. Yeah. Now it feels more of a collaborative. 
yeah. thing. Definitely. Um, Ten Hag was speaking about Dallow. He said, I'm really happy with the improvement of Diogo. He's done really well. Uh, as Gary Neville mentioned, uh, you played in that position yourself, so he's talking to Neville there. Uh, so you can be critical because you know how to play there. But I think his defending positions are growing from game to game. His timing, also his duels, is better from game to game. In possession, I think he's really good. And he, had the, uh, he has the breath to go up and down. Uh, he said the development is really good, but I have to mention that a club like Manchester United, he needs two fullbacks because uh, we need two fullbacks. Sorry, because we have a lot of games to cover. I didn't know United identified as a he. Yeah, interesting. Male. Oh, interesting that though that we need another fullback when we do have Brandon Williams and Aaron Wan-Bissaka at the club. It's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> well, it's not a ringing endorsement. <laughs> no, it's the opposite. It's like when Jose brought on, who was it? He said, we ain't going to midfielders on the on the bench. And yeah. Fred was literally sat on the bench. 50 million pounds on the bench. Yeah. wan or Fred, 50 million quid. Um, Mate, what was Fred doing the other day when he did step overs and took a shot? I'm not sure. <laughs> he thought he was someone that he wasn't. <laughs> when, when have you ever seen a central midfielder brought on the pitch to see the game out? Mm. Chuck in some step overs and shoot from the halfway line. <laughs> it's just Fred, isn't it? Fred doesn't know what seeing the game out is. He Do just does his thing. Yeah. There was these three pissed up geezers in front of us at Old Trafford the other day. And like, we were all singing, you yeah, and I, all mm. these different songs, but they just kept singing about Fred. <laughs> like, constantly just singing themselves. about Fred. And then at one point, they were like, if Fred scores, we're on the pitch. And then two minutes later, he hits the, the post, and everyone looks at him like, it's going to happen. <laughs> Just, if, if that happened, it would have been amazing. Um, he spoke about, uh, Luke Shaw spoke about Ten Hag as well, which is another, the other side of this, obviously, what the players are seeing. He said, I can see a lot of progress. I can see that the team is enjoying the new ideas and wanting to work with the new ideas. He's brought in a lot more intensity, a different structure, and a structure that we know what he wants us to do, which is a big help. The main thing is intensity and, and aggression, and he wants us to go out on the pitch and give 100% and leave it all out on the pitch. He also said uh, a couple of weeks ago about how if you don't perform, you'll get dropped, which is a different to how it's been before. I love, like, I know that was Luke Shaw speaking then, but, like, we have become a club of people that say vamos and all that. Mm. Like, vamos! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that shit, man. It is good, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's good. It must be good to be, like, Latin, isn't it? Mm. Like, they've got a way about them, innit? And everyone seems to like them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look at... Look at Martinez, man. You I see know. how he jumped on the hair's back? Yeah, so good. <laughs> His legs were just switching. He's so, he's so <laughs> short. He's such a <laughs> short man. <laughs> there used to be this thing I did with my brother, yeah, when he was little, like three, four years old. Mm. I used to pick him up there and go, run. And he used to run and his legs used to just move <laughs> really fast. <laughs> <laughs> that was Martinez hanging off yeah. the hair. Um, uh, do you think we're going to... Do you, Does it feel like this is a manager that, with the right team, with the right time... Uh, save your question. Eric Tenag is the truth. He is the way, the light, and the future. I think we can win the league. He though. is the man. I'm saying it with tears in my eyes. I know, I was say. It's because I yawn, but really it's because I'm so emotional. Eric Ten Hag is the bollocks. Yeah. He looks like one, but he is the bollocks. I think he's good enough to win the league with Man United. I'm not, when I say yes, I don't mean this season. No. It's a long way to go, but yes. <sighs> he's going to bring... Nice. You know what? Yeah. You know when he come in and said... What did he say? Eras are there to be ended. Mm. I just thought, we've got the guy. Klopp's doing that for we've him got, as well. We've got the, the guy. Yeah. No football heritage. No. Just eras are here to be ended. And I loved how in his interview post-match, I know he's probably, like, these things are knocked into his head so much. Mm. But, like, he brought up, like, oh, yeah, 85 years today since mm. we got, and, and Marcus Rashford scored. How lovely. Mm. And everyone else was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I nice, like that. It? It's a nice little, little touch. touch. He knows the club. He likes the club. Mm. And he looks great in a suit. Right. Even him just coming out early, looking at the pitch, mm. just makes me think, this is a man in control. Mm. He knows what's going on. Yeah, I love Eric Tenard. Best manager in the league. Easy. Easy. Piece of piss. Right, should we wrap it up there? Yes, please. Thank you very much for joining us. That has been how Ten Hag has improved players at Manchester United. He's not just giving them tactics, he's giving them coaching. Uh, interestingly, I saw an interview with and Michael Owen years ago. Mood. I saw an interview with Michael Owen years ago. Obviously, must have been must have been fun to watch. It was phenomenal. <laughs> but I remember what he said during his whole time as a player, no coach ever came to him and taught him how to finish or taught him where to stand in the box or how to be a striker. He never had any coaching on how to be a striker. And part of me thought, oh, well, that's because he was so instinctive. But another part of me thought, 
maybe he could have done with some of that. Maybe, yeah, look, how good would he have yeah. been? Yeah, like maybe he should have had a bit more instruction. And that's obviously something that Ten Hag is doing with Rashford and De Gea and, and, full, and the fullbacks as well. So it's great to see these players improving off the back of that instruction. Thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you hit subscribe to Stratford Paddock if you haven't already. Ten Hag is the truth. And we'll see you in a bit. Bye.